Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 162 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And I'm Barbara. How's your new job going, partner? Pretty good. Still getting used to the sales life. Much different than the lab life, I'll tell you that. (laughs) Yeah, I know, because we're recording this at the end of the month, and I'm in a hay spat mode, and you're nice and laid back, so congratulations. (laughs) Good for you. Yeah, so interesting thing happened. I actually was calling on some labs, which is really fun, getting to meet people. And a lady answered the phone and she said, I just had to pause the podcast to answer this phone. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, well, awkward. Cool. Uh, hmm, how do I follow up with that? You can hang up, finish the episode, then call me back. <laughs> Yeah, it's really neat getting to talk to other labs because, you know, that's what we do on the podcast. That's what I love to do. Now I get to do it as a job. Excellent. Well, good luck. Yeah. As the world opens up a bit more and restrictions are being lifted, we start to see the return of dental laboratory conventions. Thank God. Yes, ma'am. With the FDLA in June and Ladies of the Mill and Fun in the Sun in July... It's really nice to see technicians gather again for education and social socialization. I knew you were going to have a hard time with that word when I read it. Socialization. <laughs> but it all started when Texas, good old Texas, was brave enough to have the first show of the year back in March. Now, let's not forget... They also had a show in the middle of the pandemic in October. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they just turned it right around and had another one, their usual time, in March. And just like in October, we were there, not there, recording live, not live, from the Argon booth at the DLAT conference. Or as they like to call it, the DLAT. Oh, yeah. So this is where the amazing Keith Wilson set up a microphone speakers and a laptop and got a bunch of people to sit down with us it wasn't as great as being there in person but it is the next best thing so on today's episode we jam in five conversations we had while at the argon booth first up orthotech and the man that makes the d-lat happen k tibbet then we got a visit from our good friend marlon gone from the argon corporation Next up was a great team from Pinnacle Digital Dental Restorations there in Texas, Fernando Sanchez Jr. and Gary Osborne, who's got some great stories of the past. Yes, he does. And then we wrap up the whole episode when we talk to the local Three Shape rep, Spencer Watkins. They're all great conversations from great people at a great show. So join us live, not live, from the DLAT. Few things create more interest today than the digital denture. Whitmix has developed a processing system for printed dentures, which uses Dentka, the first 3D printed denture and denture teeth resins to ever receive the FDA clearance. Their physical properties and biocompatibility pass FDA requirements and enable the printed denture properties to be very similar to conventional dentures. The material, coupled with fast and easy 3D printing with Asiga printers and the convenience of curing with a UVtron UV light, results in fewer dentist visits, predictable fit, reprintable data files, lower cost, and excellent intraoral denture performance. The Denka material, available from Whitmix, includes an ivory color try-in material, tooth shaded materials in Vita shades A1, A2, A3, A3.5, B1, and B2, and denture based materials in original pink, light pink, reddish pink, and dark pink shades. To learn how to create your own digital denture, check out Whitmix.com for their digital denture courses and for more information about the system. Thanks for your continued support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. We had 165 pre-registrations. Wow. 
That's great. Oh, you want them to record this? Just I so am, you know. Cade. Welcome back. Oh, you are recording. Okay. <laughs> hey, Cade. Hey, we're live, not live. Yeah, right? we are. <laughs> smart, not smart. From <laughs> so, Cade, you're the guy behind the DLAT. I mean, let's be honest. You're the one that's making this thing happen every year. Yeah, don't look behind the curtain because <laughs> you're not going to like what you see. <laughs> I've met somebody here and they go, Cade, what's going on with your hair? I'm like, what? They go, you got a gray streak on your side now. I was like, oh, yeah. I call that one DLAT. And the other one is moving my lab. So I got two gray streaks on either side. Oh, so tell us, how's the meeting going? How many do you have registered? So we had 165 pre registered. Wow. I believe someone said around 60 or 80 walk ins. Wow. Damn. I feel like that number is. It felt like 60 or 80 people walking in and registering, but um, um, it feels like there's a lot more. I believe we've printed over 200-something badges, so that's wow. speaker, things like that. So that's everybody included. So so is, is this more or less than when you guys did it in October? More, yeah. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. That's, I believe that's we had 90-something pre-registered for October, so we're at over 160-something pre-registered uh that was thursday night and of course we had more walk-ins today so we might be pushing 200 by the end of the day today that's fantastic i think it's amazing i think uh, you proved it in october and now you're proving it again in march and i think everybody's just psyched to go to a meeting yeah congratulations that's that's been the feeling here we a lot of people like hey how you doing you know everybody's been locked in a cage for a year and uh we're all a little lighter skinned and uh, darker eyed <laughs> and, you know didn't get much sun a little heavier <laughs> yeah, yeah a little heavier you know, everybody's belt buckles are a little stretched at the meeting <laughs> wow i'm proud of you guys so we're doing a live stream also and we're doing two in the morning two in the evening both days and we average we're averaging about 20 to 30 live stream attendees at wow. once, nice. but one or two, two or three of those are the VA, the uh, Veterans Affairs Dental Labs. Um, oh, yeah. The director for the Dallas VA uh, went to Washington and put the DLAT's live stream into the recommendations for the VA mm-hmm. to get their CE credit because uh, the VA is not allowed to go to meetings yet. They haven't approved it. That makes sure. sense. So yeah. Good old government, yeah. He sent me an email. He goes, big shout out to the 58 people – VA dental technicians uh, watching the live stream today. So they all are in the lab and they got a projector and a screen. And so they're kind of joining us virtually. Nice. So why 2 a.m.? Who's listening at 2 a.m., if I might ask? No, 2 in the a.m., 2 in oh, the p.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 2 a.m. I was like, who the hell is listening at 2 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> Probably some. Okay. Phew. I was up right. at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course you are. You're running a show. You don't sleep at all this weekend. We, yeah, yeah I, I sleep when I get back to the lab. <laughs> so the Texas VA has its own lab there? Yes. Yeah. They. I want to say they got about 40 or 50 dental technicians. And wow. we offer them a I special no price because of, the VA gives them so much money a year for continuing education. So we, sure. we try to match that. Running a conference is expensive. Yeah. So sometimes we give them a break, but then we say, hey, don't eat lunch. <laughs> we can't afford to feed them. <laughs> and they're like, that's fine. We like to go out to eat together anyway. So uh-huh. nice. But that's really cool. What's the vibe there? So Texas dropped their mask mandate. It was a big deal. Yeah. What's it like there? Are there a lot of masks still? Yeah. Well, the, the hotel's actually still requiring it. Okay. Um, in the hallways and stuff. So they say once you're in your meeting rooms and the exhibit hall, take them off. It, you know, we don't care. Just as when you're walking around the hallways and stuff, please yeah. wear a mask. So they've asked us to to keep up with it. I think another thing is where FEMA is actually stationed right now in the hotel with us. They they it they're using it as their command center for oh vaccine wow. vaccine distribution wow. in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, huh. If I got my facts right. So they've taken some, some of the rooms, so we've had to shift around. But I think that's another reason to keep the mask on, because they got people coming in and registering for vaccines. You could actually go get your shot. Well, that's what the, I was asking them that. And they go, well, they don't actually do the shots here, 
they actually coordinate oh. all the stations okay. where they're doing the shots. So they're all right. doing all the coordination and assigning people to work there and stuff like that. So interesting. So I, I walk by and, and there's a meeting going on and everybody's got like these reflector vests and mask on and stuff like an emergency is about to happen. I'm like, <laughs> there's armed guards walking around. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> well, have a great meeting. You said you had to go make sure you didn't have any projectors burned down. So yeah, you know, well, that's what I was told. We had a projector make a terrible burning smell when they huh. turned it on. So we need to really upgrade the projectors. I think somebody must have sabotaged it, you know, um, because th these projectors, they got VGA, if that tells you how old yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah. Trying to find adapters. So we got to make sure all the projectors are running. The live stream's going right now. I have uh, an assistant helping me. Uh, she has to come to these meetings and she's running the camera and switching the camera views for me. So I'll probably need to get nice. back and <laughs> make sure nothing burned down there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Kate, it's always great to talk to you. Again, thanks for helping us hook up to do this. Oh. Sorry we're not there next year for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, we're expecting some big numbers for next year and yeah. uh, some some big adjustments in our how we do things. So For sure. The, well, congratulations. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all. And thank you all for doing this, spending your Saturday on in front of y'all's computer. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all so, right. I'm going to go grab Keith. I think she, he about have got somebody. So All right. Awesome. Take care. All right. Thanks, Cade. We'll talk to you later. Okay. See you. Well, have a good day. Thank you. You too. Dun, dun, dun. Can you hear all of the background noise? Yes. All the hustle and bustle of the meeting. And it's a, oh, it's not even break yet, so I'm sure it's manufacturers. And... I'll introduce you. Oh, here he comes. Hi, Barb. Hi, guys. It's Marlon. Hey, Marlon. Marlon. Hey, Elvis. How you doing, buddy? What's happening, sir? Oh, you know, just living the life. Actually out seeing <laughs> real people these days. Oh, I know. I saw <laughs> your Facebook. Like? Does everybody seem strange? <laughs> are these humans that I hear of? Are they as, well, as interesting as I hear? They, they now have beards and long hair. Yeah, that's what we said. And a little more We're fat on their haircuts by spouses. <laughs> How you two doing? Great. Really well. It's 93 here in Florida. I'm sure that it's hot there in Texas. I saw you on your uh, Facebook page saying you were headed to the meeting. Yeah. That was like the first one of the year. So congrats. First one finally. of the year. I was in Pittsburgh last week. It rained like crazy, but there again, in a few labs there last week, and it, it's kind of nice. I mean, uh, being able to get out and... Um, see what what's going on with people these days i mean you know how they made it through the last year and yeah. uh, it's amazing that it's been a year yeah and uh, yeah. most labs are just as busy as can be mm -hmm. I, we I are. Look, yeah every lab i've been in i i get phone calls constantly labs looking for technicians yeah. and it's like what happened to them all well, yeah. as you know, some got furloughed and let go and what have you. But, you know, it's just getting some of them back. It's been tough. But uh, it seems like the dentists right now are making up for the nine months that they weren't doing anything. Oh, hell yeah. You know and it. They're all busy. I mean, that's yeah. uh, it's amazing. Do we think they're prepping when they really shouldn't be, but they are in order to make up for the lost income? Well, you know, it. it <laughs> well, Keith said you were guys were on the line. I wanted to say hello. So what are you what doing are you at doing the meeting? Just, yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? I did a lecture and then I did the lab induced headaches. Oh, uh, yesterday. Lab induced headaches. Lab induced. Oh, I know. What does that mean? What it means is. Technicians. Uh, <laughs> Yep. The headaches that you produce yourself in labs by, you know, that almighty thing that's called follow instructions. Oh, yeah. Never. Uh, read the RX? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something different there. I did that program yesterday, and uh, it was good. I, you know, even people coming back down to the booth uh, uh, asking questions and talking about things that I did. And it's, it's a lot of things that, like I said, it's been a year and a lot of people forgot. 
you know, it's okay if I, you take a shortcut and everything keeps working okay and somebody else takes a shortcut and yeah, it works okay most of the time, but when the next person takes a shortcut and the wheels fall off, whose fault is it? Uh-huh. You know, it's like, yes. well, I've always done it this way. Well, it works until it doesn't. So a lot of things that, you know, I covered yesterday, and it's funny, when I ask people that uh, if they've ever really looked at a shade tab, yeah, they look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Maybe you are. I am. Not I know sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just confirming it. <laughs> but, you know, when you look at a shade tab, it's like, what's the hardest shades to get out of, you know, let's say a zirconia. It doesn't matter oh, what God. brand. D2. D2, D3. D3. So, yes. it, you know, and then you got your B1 and C. Yes. Very hard to get, right? Yep. There's a reason for that, and it's one of the reasons that, that Arjun took that middle third of the shade tab to try and match theirs. Hmm. If you look at a shade tab sideways, and this is a thing that actually nobody does, you look at it sideways, you'll see how much incisal overlay there is in that shade. Now, like your D2s, D3s, what have you. You literally, if you look at it sideways, you have a incisal overlay over the whole tooth. Hmm. Okay. Very little on the cervical is where the incisal ends, depending on the color. That is why you cannot really get that depth and translucency that you you see in the shade tab just by straight out. Now you can adjust centering temperatures and what have you. That changes the end result but as far as out of the box or even stacking porcelain it's a little tougher so oh hell yeah I you agree. know I, I i covered things like that you know just different things about you know using pegs and making sure temperatures are are right and what have you so it was actually it worked out good and um, a lot of questions and uh, even afterwards so it, it to me, it was good. You know, first show, it was really good. And then I went to uh, Bennett's program afterwards, which was fantastic. Um, oh, state yeah. of the industry? The state of the industry. And he... Was it positive or negative? Um, it was actually pretty positive. <laughs> it would have to be. I mean, yeah. I know. It was very positive And um, a lot of results from what technicians are now being paid. Mm, interesting. I mean, big change, and especially denture technicians. Good or bad? Oh, wow. <laughs> higher or lower? <laughs> much, much higher. Well, they're much, much more in demand and hard to come by, and oh, it only makes yeah. sense. You know, a few years ago, I was in uh, at the Greater New York Show. I remember in uh, the IDT had uh, that one section there that was for the labs. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had a master technician's booth. And there was three people, two women and, and a gentleman sitting at this bench. I would say the youngest one was in their mid-80s. Wow. And I'm standing there talking to one of the ladies. And uh, this guy walks up and he goes, master technician's booth. And I said, yeah. And they said, uh, so where can I find me a good denture tech? Without huh. missing a beat, this guy looks up and he says, in the cemetery? Oh, oh. yeah. That's, that's <laughs> sad. <laughs> no, it, you know, that's kind of true. true. But true. Because people were... Oh, you the know, poor denture it, it technicians was, listening to the podcast are like, oh, my God, I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it is very, very true. true. I was actually in a lab just a few days ago that their highest paid technicians in the lab are the denture techs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There again, age. Uh huh. So, you know, it's like when, when I got into it, it's crown and bridge was the big thing to get into. Everybody back then was doing dentures and what have you. And, uh, um, now it then it transitioned to crown and bridge. Now it's going back to removable. Mm. Yeah, so true. It, it's one of those things. Mm. 
you'll see some of the schools uh, start teaching it again and and going through it. And digital dentistry uh, is going to help quite a bit. I agree. Let's hope so. so. Yeah. Yep. Eventually, anyways. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing Thanks. well. Doing, doing fantastic. Well. Yeah. Wishing we were there. Yep. Well, yeah, I'll see you in uh, Elvis, you coming down to Florida? FDLA? Uh, FDLA? I hope so. I hope by then I'm allowed All to right. I'm His allowed wife to won't let house. him travel. He's a kept man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Elvis. Yeah. Well, I, I will be there, and I'm actually going to stay a few days longer. Cool. Uh, go fishing with you. All Dave. right. Well, I'll be there, too. Okay, good. Maybe we can have dinner. There you go. Yep. Enjoy the freaking meeting. Right. Have fun. Tell everybody we said hello. I never miss a free meal. <laughs> you know, free's good at twice the price. <laughs> Marlon, we appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. Good talking to you, too. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Hey, Elvis, Barbara, how you doing? It's Keith. Keith, what's happening, man? Well, we're sitting here with uh, half Fernando here. Fernando? And, uh, yeah, Fernando. He's a local laboratory technician. And... Hey, how you Hello, doing? Hi, Bob. Hello, how are you? Anyway, I'll let you two uh, have at it. Awesome. Uh, we have to put up with Keith quite a bit, but yeah, sure. <laughs> he's, he's not a bad person to no, put he, up with. He's great. He's great. Fernando, what's your last uh, name? My name is Fernando Sanchez Jr., and I'm from here from Texas. I'm part of a two-man lab. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're small, and uh, we mainly have emphasize uh, all ceramic uh, restorations uh, on the Crown and Bridge side, mainly. Yeah. So is the other person in your lab the senior, or no? Very. <laughs> He's very senior. Today he gets his 45-year patch. Oh, my God. 45 years, the CDT? That's nice. Incredible. Yes. His, his name is Gary Osborne. Uh, he should be around here somewhere, oh. but he's got a lot of, uh, he can talk your head yeah. off. <laughs> Lots of knowledge. What, what does he do? What does he specialize in? He likes restoring uh, full cases, uh, uh, designing. Uh, we've been working mainly with a digital uh, dentistry for the past three years or so, but he's learned a lot. He uh, Same here between both of us that's mainly what we do it's it's an all ceramic laboratory nice. so how did you get started mm -hmm. in this industry believe it or not back <laughs> back in my high school days uh, we used to have a uh, show and tell uh, kind of local colleges used to show up at our high school and our local one was a um, there was a technical school involved mm -hmm. texas state technical college yeah. and they brought in all their a good table set full of uh dentures and models and all that and i've always been a hands-on person so it intrigued me quite a bit mm -hmm. and that's where i got hooked into hey what do you got there behind the table you know so as a matter of fact i attended their college and prior to that i went to california to attend another school out there riverside uh, community college they had a good program out there uh, a dental technology program D dental technology wow. yes sorry about that yeah so you went to mm -hmm. two schools for it yes i attended two schools graduated from both of them and wow. then in 95 i started i was scouted the school was in south texas rio grande valley harlingen texas and then i was scouted uh, by one of the uh, local uh, laboratories here in, in the dallas area and they flew me up and I like what they had to bring to the table, so to say. Yeah. And they hired me. So I moved up with my girlfriend at the time. And now we have uh, two grown children. And I've made a living off of being a dental laboratory technician, certified CDT. Congratulations. Nice. Awesome. Thank so are you, you enjoying the meeting? How's it going? Love the meeting. It's great. I've been attending this uh, conference meeting for many years. And it used to be uh, very full of uh, technicians and booths and now it's kind of downscaling some but hopefully it comes back and starts uh, getting better sounds like there's a lot of text there for for the first meeting of the year kate said it's over 200 it's fantastic yes uh, i've started seeing a lot of people flow in and they're all walking around awesome. <laughs> so when did you open up your own lab uh after about maybe 18 almost 20 years of uh, getting my experience behind uh, the bench and working with some good laboratories in the area. In 2016, I teamed up with a person I had previously hired, which is my 
uh, older partner, yeah. uh, Gary Osborne. And between him and I, you know, we put our heads together and we decided to uh, make a run for it. And it started a little rough and tough, but we've kept up and it's been going good even even through the bad times just recently, as a matter of fact. Sure. We've all been through that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With just the two of you, how does one start a lab? What was your first get into? Would you get like three shape and just start designing or were you doing everything by hand? Uh, we started by hand and then we started uh, talking about the direction we wanted to head into and taking a digital dentistry to the next level and between both of us. And that's the outlook that we had in the very get go. Our uh, motto was to work uh, smarter, not harder, mm-hmm. especially him being a little older. <laughs> so it's been working out great. We keep busy and profitable, of course, and good enough to where you can work four days out of the week, be off on Fridays, and or if you need to go in on Friday, take care of you know whatever you got to take care of. But it's been overall good. Now, we started uh, with uh, learning uh, the ExoCAT system. Okay, okay. And that makes sense. And then uh, we got lined up with Itero, uh, 3M, CareStream, Medit. So you're just accepting them all, huh? Yes, we did. We uh, purchased a Medit scanner, uh, and that helped out a lot. A big part of the process. Hmm. The next in printer, which is also great. We've got a, a rolling mill, some great equipment that makes it uh, easy and uh, be able to have a good workflow. So what did you buy the intraoral medit scanner for? What was your thought behind getting that? It's not an intraoral uh, medit oh. scanner. What it is, it's a medit scanner box. And what you do, you flow your ExoCAD system through there, mm. your, your cases. I didn't know medit you, made a desktop scanner. Interesting. I believe it's called the i500. Yeah, the i500 scanner. And what it does, uh, you're able to uh, process your cases if they're the conventional style case uh, with articulators and models, Mm -hmm. physical models, or import STL files. Oh, Oh, through the scanner, through intraoral, yeah. Right. Does it scan impressions? Yes, it does. It's I'm I'm very impressed by that. By the way, <laughs> how's that going? And you're able to produce a fitting crown from scanning an impression. Yes, very true. <sighs> yeah, once once you start the system, uh, you you could go with an impression. You can go with the uh, uh, a physical model or an STL file that the office has scanned and produced a file for you. Yeah. So it turns out really well. Mm. That that's why you know we. It brought us a lot of joy when we started working with this new system and going digital, in other words. Yeah, that's awesome, because I know we've talked on the podcast before about the struggles of scanning impressions and getting them to work. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Agreed. Maybe it's a three-shape issue, not a... <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Elvis, let me tell you, this week I got approached by a company out there that uh, they lease you the printer and you end up buying the resin from them and of course a monthly payment probably yeah but uh yeah they're they're out there so depending on size of laboratory you are and how how many uh technicians working with uh, you know alongside with you and everybody's got their own system out there somehow sure (laughs) well i've never heard of that so what are you printing we're printing uh models uh, for crown and bridge Mm -hmm. it's either quad models or full arches they turn out really good, whether they'd be with uh, push-out dies or just uh, single dies that you provide along with a model. Mm-hmm. That's the way we like working with them because they're real easy to handle and work with. That's weird. Most people don't say that. Yeah, <laughs> I like printed models, yes. too. I, uh, I use you a lot of that. you prefer printed, Barb? Yeah, at this point, yeah. I didn't really? always. I didn't always, that's for sure. Barb, what kind of printer are you working with? Um, we've got the, um, which is the one? Help me out, Elvis. What do I have? Carbon. Carbon. Yeah, we've got four carbons. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, there you go. I'm getting used to them. I like them now. I, I'd say three years ago, I hated the single dies and having to switch up. But honestly, I think uh, we've worked out all the bugs and I love them. Nice. Even though I can't remember the name. It, it's 1030 <laughs> on a Saturday, just so you know. So I'm a little rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Barb's not at the show, she went out last night like she was at the show. <laughs> oh, really? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I saw both of you live at the Chicago meeting last year. Oh, we nice. Out there. Yeah. That was so that was long ago. We were actually at a meeting. I miss it. 
For me, that was the last one of the year because yep. it was happening in February. Right a month later, the country shuts down, yep. and you know, we all had no yeah. idea. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> idea. Missed it. Wow. Okay. Would have spent a few more time talking to people. If yeah. I knew I'd never see them again. <laughs> well, I hope you have a great meeting. Thank you for um, stopping by. I've, I've got somebody special here to sit down with us, and oh, you can yeah. probably pick his brain for a good while. He's my lab partner, Gary Osborne. Gary hey, Osborne. Gary. I believe I talked to you a, a little briefly about him a little while ago. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you showed up, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been over there. You've been over there? Everybody wants your autograph? Yeah. I bet. <laughs> hey, Gary, Gary, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Do you have Barb and Elvis? Hi. Doing real well. Fernando was just talking about your guys' lab. Sounds like you're the senior tech in this business. Well, I may be one of the oldest guys here today. <laughs> 45 years. Congratulations. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. That's huge. So where did you get your original training from? Well, I started off when I was 18 years old. In high school, my dad knew a guy that owned a dental lab in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and his name was Virgil Bowden. And so he took me over there one day, and I watched what he was doing, and I got real interested in it. So I uh, went to work for him part-time doing models and getting things ready, you know, for him to do. He was a Crown and Bridge guy. Mm -hmm. And after working with him for about a year, just part-time after school and stuff like that, I decided to go to lab school, so I went to Houston to uh, Career Academy of Dental Technology in Houston, Texas in 1969. <gasps> That's when I was born. Cool. <laughs> Not to make you feel old. <laughs> yeah. It was a one-year course, but it was eight hours a day, five days a week wow. uh, for a full year, Jeez. for 12 months. It was like taking a, a two-year course you know, so many hours a day for two years. Wow. So it was all crammed into one year. So, and then I went to work for a lab in uh, Houston, Texas, owned by a gentleman named Andy Gallerano. He and his brother, Johnny. Johnny owned a partial lab and Andy owned the Crown and Bridge lab. And Andy was a, a genius at Crown and Bridge for back in the day, you know, bear skins and stone knives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> but, uh, but Andy taught me so much, and I am so grateful for all the people who have taught me over the years and helped me get better. Yeah. Uh, they've all been magnanimous with their uh, information and knowledge, and it was a great, great thing to have mentors like that when you first get started because I wouldn't be the technician I am today without all those people who helped me get there. Oh, yeah. For sure. Well said. And uh, Barb and Elvis... Gary has embraced quite a bit on the digital side, so it's great to see him work his wonders. Yeah, I, I can Always. tell you that when I started digital five or six years ago, I taught myself ExoCAD. Really? <laughs> I didn't have anybody to teach me, so I just taught myself. So talk about that transition. I yeah. Mean, compared to what you learned in 1969. Yeah, yes. it's easier, I think. If a technician is already a technician, if he's already certified and he's already really good at what he does, yeah, the transition is easier than if you bring somebody in off the street and say, I'm going to make you a scanner and I'm going to make you a design tech and I'm going to, you know, for sure, because you have computer skills, I'm going to make you all this. That somehow doesn't translate so well yeah. Yeah. because they don't know what a tooth looks like. They don't know how the muscles work in the head muscles and the mouth muscles and all of that. And they need to learn some of that, too. Because in order to create larger cases, you have to know how all that works together. Correct. But for me, the transition was really pretty easy because I already knew what a tooth looked like. And yeah. I knew how to make them. So all I had to do was figure out which tool to use to get the desired effect that I wanted on the screen. So it was, it was more a matter of learning the, the software than having to learn anything else. I already knew occlusion. I already knew all the other stuff. So yeah. I knew what the end result was going to be before I started, so it was easy. How long were you using ExoCAD saying to yourself, man, if I could just do this by hand, it would be easier, before it well, became easier with ExoCAD? Yeah, <laughs> I can tell you yes. it was about at least two to three weeks Yeah. before I got really comfortable with some of the tools. I still There's still some things about ExoCAD I don't know and understand, but I'm learning them piece by piece, you know, still. Yeah. And I've been at it for five years. So, so it's a transition. 
Do you ever finish with ExoCAD knowing that you'll just do it by hand when you get done milling it or printing it or whatever? Just like, I'll just do it after. No. No, good. <laughs> no, I will never go back to hand manufacturing. Yeah. Wow. Same, Agreed. Here, same here. No, no way, no way on this earth. I, I will retire before that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Have your hands healed, or are they past the point of healing? <laughs> oh, my hands are fine. You know, it, <laughs> my hands never really got beat up too bad because all I ever did was Crown and Bridge for any major period of time. When I first got out and started my first laboratory, I was a denture lab. Wow, really? Because I went back to Bartlesville, where I was from, and Virgil still had the Crown and Bridge lab. Wow. So I moved in there with him and started a denture and partial lab, and, and believe it or not, we were casting full gold partials back then nice <laughs> yeah and they were beautiful oh yeah i mean if you get a partial frame made out of 18 karat gold <laughs> it is something to see oh yeah they, they come in the lab occasionally they're fun yeah. yeah they're jewelry i mean that's not that's not dental work that's jewelry <laughs> <laughs> i agree yeah and we did that i did that for about a year and a half and then i got my draft notice to go to vietnam mm. so oh my god yeah, it was, uh, you know, back in that time. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so I had to close the lab, and I went down and enlisted so I wouldn't be, you know, just a regular ground pounder. Yeah. And so I got into the dental lab program in the Army. Oh, really? So you got experience yep. there, too. Wow. Yeah, well, in basic training, they singled me out and sent me to sniper school. Oh. Because I was a really good shot. <laughs> but they... But then I kept telling them, I said, it's in my contract. It's in my contract. I'm a dental technician. <laughs> it all worked out. And I spent five and a half years in Fairbanks, Alaska. I was in the military up there at uh, Fort Wainwright. And that was the farthest north, I guess, full military base at the time. Wow. And we had a big dental clinic and a big hospital. And uh, we were sending everything to Alameda, California. All the lab work was going to Alameda, California. So I convinced our colonel to open up a full-service Crown and Bridge lab there in Fairbanks in the dental clinic. Oh, wow. He went to the Department of Army and got the funding. And we built the first self-sufficient individual Crown and Bridge lab anywhere in the country outside of the regional dental activities. Wow. And what year was that? And, and we got it done in Fairbanks, Alaska, 1972. Wow. Is that lab still there functioning? Uh, as far as I know, they still have the lab there. They probably do ship everything, though, to Alameda now. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but then when I got out of the Army in 74, early 75, about five of my dentists that worked in the dental clinic decided to stay in Alaska and open practices. <laughs> so they contacted me and said, hey... We'll set you up in a dental lab in Fairbanks, Alaska, if you'll get out of the Army and stay here with us. So I did. Nice. Good <laughs> for you. And so I had a lab in Fairbanks called Alaska Ceramident, and that was at the time when they started building the Alaska Pipeline. Mm. And I ended up being uh, one of the only labs in Alaska at the time. There were only about four of us or five of us in the whole state. Yeah, I imagine, yeah. I went down and negotiated and got the Teamsters contract for all of their dental lab work. <laughs> nice. For all the, all, all the pipeline workers. He's a pioneer, guys. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a log cabin. <laughs> oh, even that too, yeah. Smart man. Yeah, it's been great talking to you guys. Yeah, sure you. Has. Going to this show must be what? I mean, just coming home, seeing friends. I mean. Oh, yeah. I go every year just to see, see the old timers and all the guys that I've known for years and a lot of the young guys that I've met. You know, that I work with occasionally or see or they call me if they need to have a question, you know. Oh, yeah. We do a great job working together down here. Hi. Wow. Fernando, soak up as much as you can. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been a sponge, as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Came in with experience, but this guy's got a lot more than I do. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> You guys are doing a good job, man. It sounds cool. Yeah. Thank there you. Go. We've got a class we got to be at. So yeah. Oh, hurry up. See you guys later. All yeah, right. Go learn. Bye. Take care. Yes. Okay. See you later. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Get over here, Spencer. We have another live one here. All right. Yeah. This guy has a pretty creative uh, history going way back with his father. This is Spencer Watkins, and he's with Three Shape now. 
And I'm on a, this is Barbara and uh, Elvis. Hi, Spencer. Hi, and, uh, <laughs> right How are y'all? Great. What's up, Spencer? How this are you? I'm good, thanks. Did Keith roll you in? <laughs> uh, yeah, it just kind of blindsided me, but uh, this will be fun. Yeah, I was going to say, what's it like uh, having Keith, what does he do? Just come up and say, hey, there's a podcast over here and pull your arm. That's literally what just happened. <laughs> we always say he's an amazing person because he gets everybody and he just Absolutely. keeps coming. So Absolutely. thank you. He's keeping everybody on their toes here. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, of course. So Spencer, he mentioned you're with Three Shape. I am. I'm, I'm the manufacturer's rep for Three Shape now for uh, Texas and some of the surrounding states with uh, laboratory systems and uh, clinical trio systems. So that's been fun. So how did you end up with Three Shape? That's a pretty cool gig to have. It is a cool gig. Previously, I was the technology specialist for Nobel BioCare for 10 years. Mm. Oh, wow. We had a lot of laboratories and doctors using the Three Shape technology, so I was excited to jump on board with them local as their uh, representative here. What's so. it been like for you with the uh, with the whole COVID thing? Are you traveling a whole lot less? Do you do a lot more virtual, or how has your job changed? Yeah, so that's been really interesting. Like at the beginning of COVID, everybody had shut down and I would drive to the ends of the earth, I felt like, to go meet with somebody and, and just to do a demo and, and meet with somebody versus trying to sit on a Zoom meeting anymore. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, especially in Texas, it's opened up quite a bit. So things seem pretty regular now. Good. So it's been a lot better. Yeah. Good. Were you ever in a lab working on designs or? Yeah. So my father owned a laboratory up here in the Dallas market for over 40 years. And oh. uh, I worked with him a little bit after college in the laboratory before I joined up with Nobel BioCare. So who was he? Uh, that was Phil Watkins with Functional Aesthetics. Okay. I bet he knows my dad. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. That's a great name for a lab. I know. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, no. The, the lab is still going. He sold it to his partner, Kyle Swan. So it's still, still rocking and rolling. So it's been so good. So what, did you design there for your dad on 3Shape? Well, I was actually not using 3Shape at the time. They were using the, back in the day, was the Nobel BioCare, the Forte scanner, which oh, was a... Oh, yeah. A, yeah, remember that? Yeah, and so... Yeah, the dot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so then the lab had transitioned into what they called the Nobel Procera scanner, which was yep. the laser one that came out. Oh, yeah. And so we were using that. The 2G, I think. Yeah, well, it's 2G now. Yeah, exactly right. So you're, you're very well versed on all that fun stuff. And Still so, have one here. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. And you can trade it in on a three shape if you're not using it anymore. <laughs> so uh, the technology was there and I was using it. And so it was a, it was a good transition into Nobel. Then I kind of started on a clinical quest and journey to not only be working with the laboratories but a lot of the oral surgeons and guided surgery and just kind of went from there so so you were doing guided surgery for your dad's lab no oh. not at the time when i was at nobel we nobel has their guided surgery software and so then the clinician right yes exactly right yeah. so nobel clinician now called dtx implants yeah, yeah. But we would work with anybody that was, you know, utilizing that technology to uh, treatment plan and create surgical guides and sit in on surgeries. And then the all on four market started to explode. And so that was a fun ride as well. Still going. Then why did you transition into three shape? What was the draw there? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, um, <laughs> the Nobel technology is good. Felt like it kind of had gotten kind of stagnant. I agree. And three shape is, is always pushing the envelope and innovating. And I felt like I had more more laboratory friends that were using 3Shape, and I had more clinical people that were using Trios. And so I felt like that was like a better path to kind of stay on on the track I was on. So Sure. So 3Shape's usually purchased through dealers, right? Yes, sir. What is your role if you're not the one selling it? I work with all the different dealers. So I, I have... Yeah. Yeah, so like Keith and the, the Argon team, yep. we do a lot of work together. I bet. And then on the trio side, you have all the clinical resellers, Henry Schein and Patterson and Strawman. And so I do a lot of work with them in, in the offices and doing demos and working with doctors and just kind of all over the place. Yeah, that keeps you busy. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, we have yeah. our three shape through Argon here at our lab. Fantastic. Yeah, good support. That's good. Yes, they have a great reputation for that. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to ask how the meeting's going for you so far. What's it like to be at a meeting, I should say? 
Yeah, you know, I, I was really thinking there's a, a decent turnout. I was thinking that there would probably be more just because it seems like everybody's kind of itching to get out into the public oh, yeah. these days. Yeah. But no, it's been good. We did a little presentation today just on the three shape laboratory software and all the functionality and capabilities that exist. And so that was well attended and well received. So was glad to be part of that. Nice. It's good. Are you able to talk about some exciting things three shapes coming out with or no? <laughs> yeah, they're in a beta test. You know, so three shape does a, a major for the laboratory side of things. They do a major software release kind of once a year. Yeah. And so we're still running on the 2020 software right now, but the 2021 is in beta the feedback has been really, really positive. So a lot of the advancements are coming out with, um, I don't know if you guys are doing digital dentures or whatnot, but they've, they've really yeah. increased some functionality with the digital dentures. And then they've taken all the tissue contour or the gingivator tools, if you will, from the denture module over to the implant bridge module to really be able to enhance your implant bridge work as oh, well, wow. since that, that market is growing steadily. You know, some general improvements on some other parts of the software. Not really anything crazy that I can think of that'll sure. just kind of blow you away, but uh, just continually improving things. So, yeah, I know every year there's quite a few upgrades that are very welcome, usually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've i enjoyed that being part of the Three Shape team and to, to actually see that they do listen to the voice of the customer. I think that's super important, or it is to me. Mm hmm. That you're designing a product that that is is being requested and asked for so i think that's really good yeah it's a good software i mean we have a bunch of it here i know barb you got a bunch at your lab oh yeah i oh, mean yeah. it's what keeps us rolling <laughs> yeah for sure yeah it's fun to see, talk to the people that are passionate about it and one gentleman you know had done countless you know like transitioning from the analog world of, of creating partial frameworks to the digital world now and just kind of how that had changed his life and it's fun to see. It's fun to hear. Do you know if Three Shapes started as a dental software? I've always wondered that. No, that's really kind of a cool story. So the two guys that founded Three Shape over in Denmark actually started with kind of like a desktop scanner to digitize impressions of the ear canal. So they, they got started in audiology. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And so it was really kind of a fascinating story. And they, actually, Three Shapes still is in audiology. Like, there's a whole division of it devoted to that. Really? Um, Interesting. Yeah. They took the same technology that you had from that, which was a, literally like the first, you know, iteration of their desktop scanner to be able to, to scan and digitize something. And they brought it over into the dental laboratory space. Originally, it was kind of the best kept secret, and it was really only being utilized by large milling facilities, uh, yeah. you know, where everybody was kind of sending their models in to get scanned and then having copings designed when we used to actually still work with copings. Yeah. So then it just kind of went into the general laboratory space, you know, and it has just kind of grown from there. And then obviously they moved into the clinical space with the introduction of the trios. And uh, that's kind of where they're at now. So it's been good. It's, it's, it's an interesting story. What else do they do other than ears and teeth? Is there any other industries <laughs> that they're in? No, they were starting to get into a really, really cool piece of uh, technology. It was a cone beam CT scanner, but it would also do a like a facial tissue scan of the patient, right? So that when it was sent over to the laboratory, you would have uh, essentially the picture of the patient's face in three dimension as well as their oh, CT yeah. scan to use for designing. But COVID really kind of put the brakes on further developing that. So it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of dead in the water right now. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. I had no idea that they were in the ear business. I didn't either. Yeah. You know, it's it's really just digitizing things and then processing it in the software. You know, they're not going forward with any kind of milling technology or, or anything like that. It's really just to be able to scan and design. I so. imagine dental is a larger portion of that business than ear or? oh yes sir for okay. sure i i don't know how big the ear business is I, yes maybe I, I don't know. everybody I don't know. has one elvis just everybody like has two <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure you would think yeah exactly so and my wife tells me all the time i need hearing aids so <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure that the dental business is significantly larger than the ear business, but I could be wrong. So, Is it called Three Shape in their industry? It is. Oh, yes, interesting. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Huh. The things you learn. Yeah. 
That's right. <laughs> Very good. Well, enjoy your meeting. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks for sitting down. Yeah. See you guys. I appreciate that very much. Nice to meet you. Thanks for doing what you're doing and keep arguing and check on my three shape support. Make sure they, they stay on top of that. <laughs> sure. Thank you both. Yeah. Appreciate it, sir. Have a good one. Bye. We cannot thank enough all of the people that sat down with Elvis and I at the D that show. We really, of course, wish that we could have been there recording. Mine is just not the same. I was in my house, in my bathing suit, hanging out. And I don't know what you were doing. You were probably super cold. I was in my but... bikini, though, <laughs> hanging out. <But> big... <laughs> super cold. Super cold. Big thanks to the... <laughs> All right. But Sorry. a big thanks to the Oregon for having us at their booth and for the awesome Keith Wilson for getting people to sit down, which he really did a great job again this year. So we know it's not always easy. You did a wonderful job, and we wanted to make sure we had a special shout-out for you. And next week, we actually sit down and talk with them. Yep. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Come back for more conversations next week from the DLAT. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Have a good week. Wow, that was impressive.